with you. Welcome to this beautiful Labor Day weekend of intense heat. Please stay hydrated. Please find some shade. And just don't open the hood. It's uh heat is hot. So we're going to praise the Lord and we're going to perspire a little bit today. Uh, welcome to the 20th, oh, excuse me, 13th day, 13th Sunday after Pentecost. And through the season of Pentecost, the theme has continued in our faithfulness. Uh, today, we're going to find out how much it costs to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. In our readings, the title asks us, it says, What is the cost of discipleship? And I'm going to focus on how much does it cost? When we want something or try to acquire something, we say, how much does that cost? Jesus Christ During his death and resurrection, gave us a gift that is priceless, but you still have to pay for it with your faithfulness. As we gather, the first issue that naturally comes to mind to many Christians when hearing the phrase "choose life" is that of abortion, which chooses death, not life. And indeed, never should our witness to God's gift of life be silenced. Beyond that, however, are all the other struggles we make in our struggles between God's good, gracious will for all and the universal disability of sin that constantly attempts to lead us away from God and His call to life. Today, God's Word gives us the assurance that because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has chosen to take our suffering and death into Himself by His cross, all who are baptized into His saving death are given the power of faith. We are given the power of faith to love God and pursue His ways of life according to his good and gracious law and his good and gracious gospel. Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Follow what you God-pleasing life. 
Notice that the third use is for us Christians. That is those who have been freed from the law's curse by faith in Christ. In that faith, we discover God's love reflected even in his law. So the psalm teaches us to pray, Oh, how I love your law, and your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Today we receive that light and love to follow our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.
merciful Lord, you did not spare your only son, but deliver him up for us all. Grant us courage and strength to take up the cross and follow him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the triune God of peace and joy fill you all with hope and love. Peace be with you. Greet one another with the way of peace.
been over three years, but some of us have not gotten together with our families. So we pray for togetherness, but most of all, we pray for safety. Let us all be safe this, this hot, long weekend. In the beginning, God gave us the ability to choose. Let us make good decisions this week. Amen? Call to prayer. Have mercy upon them and 
and lead them on the path to health according to your will. Lord, we celebrate the birthday of our beloved Cheryl Chandler this day. Happy birthday, Cheryl. We pray for all who are celebrating anniversaries and birthdays. We pray for the shared ministries on our campus. Lord, we pray for all who travel during this Labor Day weekend. Help them to be safe and arrive safely at their destinations and pray for you when they break bread together. We pray for leadership. We pray for the LWML. We pray for our government officials, our military, our law enforcement. Lord, we pray for our college students. We pray for our high school students, our middle school students, our elementary school students, our preschool students, our daycare students, our adult daycare students. Lord, be with the family of Deanna Ellison Jackson. The family is grieving of the loss of their loved one. She went missing, Lord, and they found her. It was not good. But she is in a better place. And the family must lean on you for comfort and consolation during these challenging times in their life. Lord, we pray for our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. We pray for the end of war. Lord, we pray that the leaders of all nations can come together in one accord. Lord, give strength and the will to persevere to all who suffer any persecution for the faith. Help all to whom death draws near with the peace of a confident faith. Lord, in your mercy, with reverence and affection, we remember before you, O oh Lord, all that well before us with the sign of faith, keeping us in fellowship with all your saints, and bring us at last the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have the opportunity to bless the Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
us through the gift of your only son. We're self-conscious of the bigger gifts that we bring. Therefore, we pray for a stronger faith to give of ourselves and our possessions more generously to those in need and to support the resurrection ministry through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We continue with the reading of the Word of God. The Old Testament reading is recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. The choice of life and death. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, then you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life in the land of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord, and it's God. Let us pray. Our psalm of the day. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. But is delighted in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. The wicked are not so, but are like the chafe that the wind drives away. For the Lord knows the way of the right, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Music ministry.
Philemon chapter 1, verse 21, verses 1 through 21. Paul's plea for Onesimus. I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Akhenaten, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and a church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have for the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed from you. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man, and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus. I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to me, but now he is indeed useful to you and to you. I'm sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be my compulsion, but your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was part of me for a while, that you might have him back forever. No longer as a bond servant, but more than a bond servant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you will receive me. If it is wrong with you at all, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I call, write this with my own hand. I will repay it, to say nothing of your own evil in your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit for you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the same time, prepare a destiny for me. For I am hoping that through your prayers, I will be graciously given to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Venus, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Christ Jesus be with your spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. Therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he cannot, who does not renounce all that he has, cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pot. It is thrown away. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Oh, when the saints come marching in. Context 
of the communication is important. The point of reference in the communication is important. For us today, in order to understand the truth of Jesus' words, we must hear them in context. The context in the preceding chapters of Luke have informed us that Jesus was en route to Jerusalem in order to offer himself up as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Prior to that, in Luke 9, Jesus said to the disciples, let these words sink into your ears. He said, the Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. And then a short time later, later Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. The Son of Man is about to be delivered up. The Gospel of Luke lets us know that Jesus was not in a hurry for his sacrifice. Instead, he went on his way through many towns and many villages teaching and preaching as he was heading towards Jerusalem. And finally, as we hear in our gospel reading this morning, we heard, now there were great multitudes of people with him. Jesus was drawing people to travel with him to Jerusalem. He not only wanted them to be with him, not just to celebrate the Passover, but also to be a witness. To be a witness as he offered himself up as the Passover lamb who takes away the sin of the whole world. That is the context. It is in this context that Jesus not only said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brother and sister, and yes, even yourself, he cannot be my disciple. He said also, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. As we review the context, the environment of Jesus' words, we begin to understand that Jesus is warning us about the cost of discipleship. Warning us about the earthly consequences of becoming one of his disciples. He is warning us about the hatred that the devil and the world and our own sinful nature has against Jesus. And yet we ask, how much does that cost? How much does it cost to follow Jesus? Jesus warns us that Christians we will face incredible pressure to abandon faith in Him. The devil, our own sinful flesh, will assemble with all the forces to drive us away from faith in Jesus Christ. How much does it cost? Society as a whole, members of our own households, our own families, and many times our own evil thoughts will betray us. Society may threaten physical, legal, and financial violence against us who follow Jesus Christ. Our families. They will threaten us with emotional violence. Why are you praising the Lord? He ain't doing nothing for you today. Ah. How much does it cost to stay faithful to Jesus Christ? Our thoughts 
who deceive us. Therefore, we must be ready to leave them behind. Sometimes we got to leave people alone. What's that old saying? You're just trying to break me down. How much does it cost to proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? It costs a lot. But the reward is priceless. Jesus taught whoever does not bear his own cross and come, come after me cannot be my disciple. It is with these words Jesus taught the Christians that we got a lot of enemies. We as Christians have lots of enemies. Those enemies, they will attack us. They will cause hardships in our life. The faithful will suffer in this world for the sake of Christ. Our culture today has gotten used to the idea that any hardship we encounter, we can call that a cross. That's not true. Any hardship, a sickness, an accident, a financial setback, we refer to these sometimes as crosses to bear. That's not what Jesus is talking about. When Jesus speaks of the cross, he speaks only of the cross that Christians bear because he's a Christian. He speaks specifically about the hardships that a person will bear because they confess Christ to the world. Why? Because many people hate Jesus. Many people hate faithful followers of Jesus Christ. How much does it cost to proclaim Jesus Christ as our resurrected Lord and Savior? There has been a steady stream of blood from Christians down throughout the centuries. Hebrews the writer of Hebrews 11, 36, 38, he states that many suffered mocking, flogging, chains, imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawed. And they were cut in half. And they were killed by the sword. Because they were faithful to Jesus Christ. They were tortured. They went about and the skins of sheep and goats. They were destitute. They were afflicted. They were mistreated. They were wandering about in the deserts, in the mountains, in the caves of the earth. That is a cause for discipleship. We have lost all earthly belongings and even their life for the sake of Christ. The world has many false prophets, many false teachers who insist that the wealth of the world will pour out on those whose faith is strong enough or those who think positive thoughts all the time. These false prophets, they claim to be Christians, but they are teaching you to have faith in your own faith. Prosperity preaching. Have faith in your faith. And the check is in the mail. They teach to believe in your own positive thoughts. And therefore you can take control of your own salvation. That is false teachings. They cleverly deceive us. They claim to teach faith in Christ, but they're actually teaching believe in yourself above all things. And then have faith in Christ. God has an order. It is not us first, it's Him first. Luke 12, 21 talks about Paul. 
false prophets and false believers. It says, fool, this night your soul is required of you. All the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. How much does it cost? How much of a sacrifice do we have to make to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Today, Jesus is telling us that many in this world hate the children of God. He is saying that the world will use all its resources against us, even our own family, even our own internal desires to, to survive get us off track. Jesus is telling us that his disciples must be ready to cut off ties to the Father, to our mother, to our wife, to our children, to our brothers, to our sisters, rather than be faithful to him. We must be ready to lose our lives rather than be unfaithful to Him. Can we cut off everyone to remain faithful? Can you do that? Neither can I. We simply don't have the resources to conform to Jesus' teaching. In fact, in many of Jesus' parables, he tells us, after these statements tell us, we do not have the resources to carry them out. Our attempt to surrender all, remember the song, I surrender all. Our attempt to surrender all in order to be faithful is like a man in our reading who starts a tower he cannot finish. Or like a king with 10,000 men, who's going to face a king with 20,000 men? That's not a good decision. The world is constantly trying to overwhelm us to believe that we can carry our own cross. We don't have the power in ourselves. We don't have the power in ourselves to deny our family and to follow Jesus Christ. How much does it cost? We cannot do it alone, is what Jesus is telling us. Faithfully, because of Jesus, we are not alone. The Holy Spirit inspired the writer of Hebrew 415. It says, we do not have a priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who in every respect he has been tempted just as we are, yet he is without sin. Jesus is our high priest. He experienced the same attacks that we do. And he triumphed over them. Did the world use Jesus' family to attack him? Yeah, they did. Mark 3, 21. Then Jesus went home. And the crowd gathered again. So much that he did not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, he is out of his mind. Jesus says, here are my brothers and my mothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Whoever does the will of God my brother, my sister, my mother, my 
child, a wife. Jesus himself, he had to deny his own family in order to remain faithful to God, the Father. Jesus was also faithful to his cross. This cross was not a metaphor, it was not a symbol. It was the real thing. His death was not just persecution for being faithful. His death was a sacrifice that made us all part of God's family. When Jesus endured his cross, he was making sure there was one cross that we would never have to endure. The cross we earned for all our sinful ways. Jesus paid that price. Jesus endured the cross for our sin. He did it so we didn't have to do it. He took all our sin onto himself and paid the debt. It is by his faithful suffering, his death on the cross, he triumphed over sin. He triumphed over death. But he triumphed over the power of the devil. In his triumph, he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven. So how much does it cost to be a faithful disciple? Faithfulness. We said it today. Great is thy faithfulness. That's how much it costs. Faithfulness. Jesus offers his triumph to all people through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us faith. It is by faith we receive adoption to God's family. And he promises that we shall be together always. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said, he said, behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He also said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. His triumph means he is always by our side. He will always be with us. While we live here on earth, he's with us. When our time on earth is over, we shall be with him in eternity. How much does it cost? To put God first. How much does it cost to be faithful? How much does it cost to just proclaim his name, his glory to all the people we encounter? It is only by grace that we need to be faithful to God. Even if the world threatens us with death, or our families ridicule us, and our friends abandon us, we're willing to pay that price. I'm willing to be faithful to Jesus Christ for eternal life. By the grace of God and the gift of the Holy Spirit, we have the power to stay faithful because we are not alone. God the Father knew what He was doing. He sent His Son as an example to be ridiculed, to be mocked, to be beaten, to be to be spit upon for us. It is by the grace of God and His promise that God will be with us here in time and here in eternity. How much does it cost faith? of God, which surpasses all our human understanding. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the life everlasting. Amen.
Yeah. 